A pedigree is a tool that is used by geneticists that helps them discover the way that a trait for some disease is passed down from one generation to another generation. Now by analyzing a pedigree, like the one shown on the board, geneticists can basically discover two important things about that trait for a disease. Number one, they can basically uncover the mode of trait inheritance. So is the trait for a disease recessive or is it dominant? They can also uncover whether or not that trait is found on the sex chromosome, the X chromosome, or if it's found on an autosome. So let's focus in on the following pedigree and let's describe the different components of a pedigree. So beginning with the shapes. So we have two types of shapes. We have squares and we have circles. Now the squares describe a male individual and the circles describe a female individual. We also have colored squares and circles and we have uncolored squares and circles. Now a colored shape basically describes an individual that has the phenotype for that particular disease. It expresses that disease. While the uncolored individual, the uncolored shape describes an individual that does not show that particular phenotype for that particular disease. So they are not affected by that disease. Now all these individuals, all these shapes found along the same row describe all the individuals that belong to the same exact generation. So for example, individual 1, 2, 3, and 4 belong to, let's say, the P generation. Individuals 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 belong to the F1 generation. And individuals 10, 11, 12, and 13 belong to the F2 generation. Now said another way, if we belong to this generation here, then these are our parents, these are the siblings of our parents, and these are our grandparents. Now, we also have these lines. What exactly do the lines actually describe? Well, the lines describe the relationship between the different individuals of our family. Remember, the pedigree describes the ancestry of our family. So basically, if we look at individual one and individual two, what this line describes is the fact that this is a married couple and they have three children, five, six, and seven, which are all normal with respect to the phenotype. Now, this is couple number two. So we have three and four basically mates. They produce child eight and child nine. So this is our mother that has a normal phenotype. This is our father that has the normal phenotype and they have four children. So if this is you, then these are your siblings. So we have a normal and a normal phenotype for the male. We have a normal phenotype for the female and an abnormal phenotype for that female. So this will express that particular disease. Now, sometimes we're also going to see shapes, either a circle or a square, that are half filled, that are half colored. And whenever we see a shape that is half filled, what that means is we're dealing with a, rec a recessive trait for that particular disease. So if the disease in question is recessive, then the way that we describe heterozygous individuals for that particular trait is by using the following symbol for a woman and a square, a half-filled square for a man. So this describes a heterozygous female individual that contains a dominant uppercase and a recessive lowercase. So let's suppose B is our uh, gene. So this is a heterozygous individual and this phenotype will be normal because the uppercase B is dominant over the lowercase B, but this individual is said to be a carrier of that disease because they have that lowercase B. So individual has normal phenotype, but is a carrier of that particular gene. Now, in this particular case, as you'll see many times, I haven't actually included this symbolism and that's simply because sometimes when you're looking at pedigrees, this will not be used. 
So, to see how we can analyze a pedigree, let's take a look at the following example. Let's suppose that this pedigree describes the albinism gene or, or the albinism disease. And our goal is to basically answer these two questions. So, is the disease recessive or dominant? Is it autosomal or is it X-linked? So the way that we solve these problems is we solve them by uh, uh, beginning by assuming a certain statement to be true. So let's begin. Our first assumption is that the gene or the disease is uh, sex linked and it is recessive. So we begin by making this assumption by assuming that it's true and then we check the pedigree to see if that actually works, if that assumption works. So we're assuming that our uh, albinism disease is sex-linked recessive. What that means is because this is a female individual, we have two X chromosomes and both of those X chromosomes must carry the recessive gene to produce a phenotype that is expressed. So this individual is XBXB XB, and this individual is X lowercase b y because we're dealing with a, a, a male. Now this individual must be X uppercase b and y lower or just y because if this was lowercase b this would be an abnormal individual that expresses that disease. So now by assuming that these are the genotypes of these two individuals let's see what we produce for our offspring. So let's use the Punnett square. So we have our male individual, the gametes of the male individual, and now we have the gametes of the female individual. So we have this Punnett square right over here. So we produce X uppercase B, X lowercase B, X um, this should be X Y, uh, X lowercase B Y x uppercase b, x lowercase b, x lowercase b, and y. So notice what we see. We see that if we produce a female, both females must be heterozygous. But if we produce a male, the male must express the phenotype for that disease because in both cases, they have the lowercase b. And this is not consistent, it does not work with the pedigree that we have because this individual, which is a male, has a normal phenotype and we see that by making this assumption that is impossible. And so what that means is this initial assumption that our disease is sex link recessive does not actually work. So now we eliminated the fact that our disease is sex link recessive. So it cannot be sex link recessive. Now let's now assume that it is, so let's see, assumption number two is uh, it is autosomal recessive. Let's see if that actually works out. So autosomal recessive. And what that basically means is the only time that we express a disease phenotype, a phenotype that expresses that disease is when both of those autosomes contain a gene that is recessive. And so this female individual must be lowercase b lowercase b and this male must be lowercase b lowercase b. Now what about these two individuals? Well, they can either be uppercase B, uppercase B, or they can be uppercase B, lowercase B. So we have two different possibilities. And we can test both of these possibilities to see if they actually work. Let's begin by assuming that this individual is, has this genotype, and this individual also has that genotype. So in this particular case, we can carry out our uh, Punnett square. So we basically produce B lowercase b, B lowercase b, B lowercase b, B lowercase b. So that means all these individuals, including the, 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 uh, this one, number seven, is uppercase B lowercase b. And the same thing is true here. This one is uppercase B lowercase b. And notice that this is consistent with this data because our heterozygous individual will not express that phenotype. 
So this is the phenotype or the genotype of these two individuals. Now for this to actually work, we have to continue the process and see that these possibilities, these phenotypes actually work out. So let's cross these two heterozygous individuals. So we have uppercase B, lowercase B, uppercase B, lowercase B. We produce uppercase B, uppercase B, uppercase B, lowercase B, uppercase B, lowercase B, and uppercase B, or uppercase, I should say, lowercase B, lowercase B. So this also is consistent because we have this possibility that one of the offspring will have a phenotype that expresses that particular disease. So that must mean this individual is lowercase b, lowercase b. So we can conclude that by making the assumption that our disease albinism is autosomal recessive, this actually is consistent with the pedigree that was provided to us. Now we can also carry out the same exact process and by assuming that instead of being B, 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 it can be, for example, B lowercase b, b lowercase b. If we carry out this same experiment, we'll see that this data is also consistent with that. So all we have to do is change this to lowercase b, and so now we change around our Punnett square, we get b lowercase b, b lowercase b, lowercase b, lowercase b, lowercase b, lowercase b, and we see that the, this individual can also be B or uppercase B, lowercase B. So that works as well. Now, we can try other examples as well. So by trying out this, we see that it works. So that means our disease must be this. But we can also try, for example, autosomal dominant, okay? and we can basically determine if that actually works out. Now, if it's autosomal dominant, that means there are two possibilities of expressing our phenotype. We're either uppercase B, uppercase B, or we're uppercase B, lowercase B. And if we begin by assuming it's autosomal dominant, what that means is this individual here must either be uppercase B, uppercase B, or uppercase B, lowercase B, but this individual must be lowercase B, lowercase B, if we're assuming it's autosomal dominant. So remember, these two genotypes will express that phenotype for that disease, right? So uh, we have disease phenotype but only lowercase b, lowercase b in this particular case will not express, will not express that phenotype. So that's why these are our phenotypes. And the same thing is true here. Uppercase b, uppercase b, or uppercase b, lowercase b, and b, b. So now if we carry out this same experiment, what do we see? Well, let's suppose it's uppercase b and this. So we see that if it was uppercase B, uppercase B, lowercase B, lowercase B, all of these must be uppercase B, lowercase B. And what that means is all of these must actually express that disease for that, the phenotype for that disease, which is not true, which is not consistent with this pe uh, pedigree because all these have normal phenotype. Now, if we assume that this individual is this here, what we get is we get B, B, uh, uh, B, B, and so we see that we have B, 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 um, okay? So, in this case, it does work out because what that means all is all these individuals must be lowercase b, lowercase b. But the same thing must be true here as well. What, the, what this must mean is this individual is this, this individual is this, in order to get lowercase b, lowercase b. And if these two individual mates if these two individuals mate, the only type of offspring they produce is lowercase b, lowercase b, which is inconsistent with this 
one here because this must be either uppercase B, lowercase B, or uppercase B, uppercase B, which is not possible if we're assuming autosomal dominance. So this is how we use the pedigree, how we can actually analyze the pedigree to basically help us answer these two questions and to help us determine how a given trait for some particular disease is actually passed down from one generation to another generation.